Yeah. Is it true? Correct. I heard this in Shiva that with every good deed that you do and everything that you do good, there's like an, a spiritual base on Migdash that with every good deed you do, there's another bridge added on. Yeah, I mean, that's true. It's, 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 it's um, it parallels. It, it's symbolic, but yeah, you, you're, you're going a step closer to rebuilding the Betamigdash. So, uh, it is like a brick. It's like a brick in, in like a brick in the wall. Seven stones. Uh, we yeah. Good, That's right. So the Torah refers to the intense incense that Nadav and Avi offered as a strange fire. The linguistic and thematic connection between fire and woman will be explained presently. Now that's powerful. L listen to that. Okay. Now we should not take literal when we say Lilith demons. I mean, it has many layers. What demon is? Demons inside of my head. Right. The demons is is not necessarily a, 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 a spirit. The demons is we have our own demons inside us. So it's like. Skeletons in the closet. <laughs> right. Okay. No, uh, demons are our fantasy that we create. Okay, but let's see what he said. Lilith is a female demon. Just as an angel is the personification of some holy emotion, a demon is the personification of some evil emotion. In this case, Lilith, whose name is related to the Hebrew word for night, Lila, Lily, Lila, right? Same, same letters. That's why she comes at night. Don't do that. Is the personification of men's uh, sexual lust as divorced from any context of true love or desire to increase godliness in this world. So meaning, when one man has lust and 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 wants to have sex, but not for the right reason, then it it creates an energy that is not that is strange, that is that is not the right thing, that is. That is a demon, so to speak. So every guy on this planet? Yeah, every guy on Isn't this that planet. When they waste? What? Isn't that when they waste? Yeah. yeah. Is it, does, it, does she come to women or? They come, she comes mostly to men. But she comes to women too? Um, I guess. It but it's like easier to get men. men. <laughs> we all know what I'm saying. No. <laughs> In other words, raw, self indulgent, self serving sensual pleasure. Each time you do an action that is just for yourself, that is selfish, you create an energy that is like a little demon. It's not mm -hmm. yeah, instead of an angel. Meaning we all have millions of demons around us. Okay? Man is intended... Now remember that each time you do teshuva, you elevate all those demons or you destroy them. Actually, if you do teshuva out of love, every demon becomes an angel. <laughs> what do you mean teshuva? To show out of love, meaning you you fix what you're created by doing an action that elevates what you did, or by changing your behavior, um, and you do it because you love God and really you want to come close to Him. And that moment, all your actions that brought you down, you're now using it as a trampoline to go higher, back up, and then you. Everything has been used now for a mitzvah. It's just cool. God is cool. Man is intended to indulge in sexual uh, pleasure as a spiritual pursuit that gives pleasure to his wife, makes him into a more holy person, and increases the divine image on earth, ideally by resulting in children. When instead he engages in sexual release simply for the high he enjoys from it, he is said to be copulating with Lilith with a thing that is not real. Although he does not intend to procreate by this union, he does so anyway, for every act of man has its repercussions on some level. That's why a woman who, who, who you know, the man who, who, who makes love to a woman the wrong way, she becomes a demon for him. Because she's, she's not really showing love, so she becomes, she senses it. It's all for your own personal satisfaction. What do you mean? She becomes a demon. You see when you get married. 
<laughs> the same and he expels, impregnates uh, Lilith, and she bears for him demon children, negative, abusive, and evil energy which spreads evil throughout the world. According to the Midrash, Lilith was Adam's first wife, created out of the earth just as he was. She ins in insisted on lying on top of Adam during intercourse, and when he refused, insisting that it was more proper for him to lay on her, she left him and was transmuted into a demon. Okay, now that's, that's, what you that's interesting. Okay, I actually never read that, that one. What? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't go straight to conclusion that you want to be a holy man and you're going to be only one position your whole life. <laughs> uh, that, it's, uh, we're not on that level and you're not going to make demon each time you do that. Uh, however, when you're going to make children and you have intention to make children, that's the ideal position to have. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the fastest way than you get pregnant. Right. That's true. The, uh, the way the organs are displaced, uh, displayed in the woman's body, uh, that's the ideal position. Right. It, it's just biological. Right, because everything part of the physical, yes. physical part of the spiritual. In and another position, it will cause right. for everything to just right, to sink down instead of going. Correct, okay. correct. So, um, yeah, so we mentioned previously that the dichotomization of, of mankind into male and female was God's way of assuring proper balance between the male drive to retreat into abstract unity with the divine and the female drive to manifest godliness in this world. Mm -hmm. The glue which holds these two opposite drives together, enabling them to rectify reality properly, is the attraction of passion they have for each other, each one sensing that the other one is the true complement and completion. Can you that? So we're saying there's two parts, there's male and female aspect, um, and the male and female is what brings balance to the world. And the glue that enables those two opposite, those two powers, those two aspects of God to become rectified is the attraction or passion they have for each other. Each one sensing that the other one is the true complement and completion. So these male and this female, these light and darkness, sun and the moon, Israel and Hashem, everything is, has to become back one, has the proper way to create balance, to create unity passion and desire we need passion and desire but it's just sometimes we look for passion and desire in the wrong way instead of going towards the right way which is Hashem in order to bring life to the world if as soon as I try to I might have desire for my own selfish needs you're not giving creating unity with the other therefore it's, you're only creating unity with yourself it's selfish you know you have to create unity with the other and that's that's God so you, that's what you experience in your marriage. If you make love and you just focus on your own physical pleasure, then you're not making love. You're making sex. You're making demons. You're, you're not sleeping with your wife. You're sleeping with the imaginary thing just for yourself. So, so you're saying that the woman feels like she gets taken advantage of? That's the case? Yeah, 100%. Okay. She becomes, that's why she becomes like a demon. <laughs> Does that ruin the connection between husband and wife? Yeah, but they they can rectify it. But he, you know, <coughs> the guy has to work to fix it. Allegorically, uh, allegorically, right? then Lilith's insistence on lying on top of Adam would be the tendency for this attraction to seek to become an end in itself. Sexuality and sexual passion can promote and actualize a man's or woman's innate innate divine potential as nothing else can. But the fascination with its very power can divert a person's focus from its true purpose and cause him to focus instead on the ecstatic experience itself. So because sexuality and is so powerful, <laughs> you can go be so trapped into the power and the pleasure that you are only focused on the pleasure and not into what it can do and accomplish and fix in the world. Although, and then from becoming something very spiritual, it becomes something very physical. Although Lilith is not mentioned explicitly in the Bible, she is alluded by, to, to by the way Adam reacts to Eve when he first sees her. 
calling Eve this one implies that there had been another one who had not been worthy of being called woman. So our sages alluded to this when they say that Adam stretched his membrane in order to cover his reproductive organ, the opposite of Brit Mila. Um, meaning, what's the Brit Mila? The circumcision is is we cut that extra piece of skin that is unnecessary skin, uh, which has a very that represents uh, lust and and sensitivity, a disconnection between between two people. Um, so. That's that's when we made circumcision in order to take care. We spoke about it last time. What? So what did he do? Instead? So instead he 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 I, he made a, um, as if put back or, or stretched the membrane as if to be again non-circumcised. By being with her. Uh, no, it doesn't say that. They say it alludes to it. It alludes to it when that, when Adam. Well, let's see. This is an euphemism, euphemism, meaning that he cooperated with his first Eve. Meaning, how do we know that she slept with the first Eve? Is because it say the rabbi says that he stretched out his this membrane, and that is to imply that he he was disconnected. He had, you know, he slept with Eve, uh, the the first Eve Lilith, and seared many evil spirits and demons through her. So where did that name come from? Where what did that name come from? Lila. Night. From night. night. Woman of the so night. So who said, who like, said that's going to be the name? Uh, is it God or... Oh, no, no, yeah, it's, 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 we got it from the, from the Zohar, right. from, from, well, from Kabbalah. As we have explained previously, the purpose of circumcision is to reduce the raw sensual titillation, titillation of intercourse and increase the sensitivity of the organ to that of the person's partner. In this way, copulation becomes less of an exercise in self-indulgence and more an expression of, true, expression of true love and bonding, which of course serves ultimately to enhance the sensual side of intercourse far beyond what is possible when it is treated as a selfish ep epicurean thrill. Stretching the membrane over the, the glands uh, then indicates the individual's rejection of this higher vision of sexual relations in favor of the base selfish sensual high it can provide. Again, this is the sort of sexuality symbolized by Lilith. Okay, so this was Adam's, Adam's strange fire. For both men and women are essentially fire when they lack the divine name UK. Fire here means desire or passion. That's why when you are in passion, you are you're too hot. It, it, it's physically right. So the Hebrew words for men, ish, and woman, isha are grammatically called based on the word fire. Ish is esh, isha, esh also. The word for men includes an added yud and the word for women an added hey. The two letter, the two other letters, yud and hey, together spell the divine name yud k, right, which is Hashem. There's a fire and there's a fire and there's Hashem. How do you enable to have a marriage with two fires? Only if you have Hashem in it, you can have a real fire. So two fires. Now remember, fires and fires. I mean, it's fire. And before we spoke about the fire that burned Adam and Avihu, right? Fire of Hamid. In other words, men and women are fully men and men, women only when together they manifest the divine presence. Without this, they remain nothing but two separate cauldrons of unbridled passion. You want to be one with Hashem, you be got to be a fire of love that wants to give. You have to have passion. The problem with today's marriages is there's no passion. It's just, it's just demons. They're just like selfish. I want to get married because I want to be happy. Because I want to have children. Because I want to, I, I, I want to be a man who works and I have a family. Because I want to be happy. Because I, because iPhone, because I, iPad, I, I. I. <laughs> you get you get brainwashed by the I generation. No, I get married because I need to. I want I I because 
My purpose is to give you because I have to become a giver because and you need to receive love because you 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 to get together we can change the world because together we're gonna get close to God because together we're gonna bring children who is gonna change the world because together we can be an example of light to the nation. That's why. When, however, the divine name Ka Yudke is amongst them, this is the, their true union and true fire. When the God, when the God is present in the couple's sexual relations, the union is not superficial, ephemeral, and merely physical, but a true spiritual bond that forges them into one complete person. As we said, the fire of passion in this proper union between husband and wife enhances their physical passion for each other far beyond what is possible in the lack of this spiritual dimension. Oh wow, we're not going to say the whole thing. Um, however, when the divine name Yud-K is removed, all that remains is the strange fire. So you have two fire and fire, but the fire is, with Hashem is a man and a woman in fire, then it works. This is what Adam uh, originally preferred. Um, Well, what, again, again, let's say again. So, what, what Lilith gave him is something he didn't want. Right. And so he had it. Right. And maybe his relationship with Lilith left an impression that sort of affected him. Because drove him to make uh, sin. Right. Yeah. Basically, because he made demons, because he released more demons into the world. Into the world, right? He kind of was more prone to to thinking this sin. So it's maybe a, she like softened, it's possible. softened him to a degree where when he came up to him, that he was he sort of also succumbed to it. For if it wasn't to Lilith, then he probably would have told the like, you know, what are you talking about? <laughs> now let's eat for the tree. <laughs> mm. I see what he's saying. Like yeah. The energy that he put out into the well, world. right. It's possible. So, like from the get go, Hashem wanted him to sin. Right. I mean, yeah. This this was what so many rabbis said that the the first sin was a setup anyway. So I'm so sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was. But we could have fixed everything in a shot. We just didn't. We didn't realize we got caught up in our sin. Just like our parents telling us, don't do this, don't do that, this is going to happen, that's going to yeah. happen. And you're like, no, 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 don't worry, I and got this. Happens. And then you're like, oh my God, mom, why did I do this? Right. Do yeah, same thing. Because, yeah, Hashem gives us parents in a form of Him. Right. So we have to respect them because yeah. if we don't respect them, we don't respect God. Exactly, oh, it's, exactly. It's a chain. Yes, it's, it's all connected. Life. That's the exciting thing. Um... I don't mind continuing, but I know it's very late. You want to stop here? Oh, have a bedtime. What? I have a bedtime. <laughs> you have a bedtime? Oh. You want to continue or you want to stop? I can continue. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll continue. <laughs> how much more? Is how much more? That's the question. Um, it, it, it depends how fast, how many questions you ask. Okay. We'll be finished if you start asking questions. Is this? It's just one more pa well, uh, page and a half. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Nada and Abihu. Nada and Abihu. Nada and Abihu. Yeah, we should ask questions after. Right. Nada and Abihu committed the same error and it was very grave since there were none in their generation that could compare to them. The higher you are, the more of a damage you make. Just Adam, like Adam Rishon. Witnessing the profound revelation of God that accompa accompanied the, the installation rites of the tabernacle, Nadav and Abihu, like the rest of the Jewish people, were overcome with emotions of holy ecstasy. 
advice we should that we will make sense like that because we're so excited for God. As it is written, and Moshe and Aaron went into the tent of meeting and came out and blessed the people. And the glory of God appeared to all the people, and the fire went forth from before God and devoured the burnt offering and fat parts that had been placed on the altar. And all the people saw it, and they sang in ecstasy and fell on their face. They experienced God's presence. You, you bring an offering and God takes it. Whoosh. Inspiration, upliftment, and ecstasy are of course essential ingredients in a person's spiritual life. Who is excited here? <laughs> Inspiration, upliftment, and ecstasy are of course essential ingredients in a person's spiritual life. When you put candles on Friday night, you have to be flying with those candles. Like, I'm changing the world. What's going on with this fire? I'm bringing fire. I bring fire to the world. To fire. Man, Ish, woman, Isha. And by the end of Shabbat, it's one. Because it was the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence. Then the, the, twi the, the weeks are intertwined. Because man and woman became one. Okay, so uh, try to... Go deeper into it. It's 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 full of meaning. Realize what's happening. Make, yeah, make it with excitement. Find where the excitement is. They are, however, only half of the story. Their true fulfillment comes when the person uses the inspiration to make the world a better, holier place. Instead of viewing his ecstasy as one side of the coin of divine service, however, Nada and Avihu sought to remain in it, to use the idiom of Yechezkel. They wanted to run but not return. The sacrifice they chose to express these incense is the most spiritual of all the sacrifices. They wanted to go, they wanted to get high. That's the danger with drugs. You want to get high, you want to stay on that place. But when you are high on that place, you can't do your fulfillment in this world. That's not what the world is for. You simply get high, come back down, fix. Go back high, come back down, fix. Don't get no no. I'm not saying it's getting drugs. I'm using the example of drugs. Why people do drugs? Because drugs they escape and they want to get high. They want to get a drug gives you a taste of the spiritual world. Uh, yeah. Okay. You can unlock doors to see things that right. So and 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 what happened is you come back and 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 you come back to a fake reality and you don't do anything. The, the the goal is to to get inspired to get spiritual and then and then come in this lowly world and and fix things bring the spirituality down so the chakra they chose to express this incense is the most spiritual of all sacrifices on a somewhat more refined level this is essentially the same mistake or sin that adam made when he opted originally for lilith self-indulgent sexuality has its own ecstasy and it could even be called a spiritual ecstasy. It's like a porn but on a spiritual level. But because it is ecstasy for its own sake, it is ultimately egocentric and evil. You could say, well, what's wrong with porn? Porn is like it's pleasure and we, we experience pleasure for each other. You don't understand. You're not accomplishing anything good with porn. You're not bringing love into the world. You're not, you're not bringing any... It's, it's all selfish. It doesn't make the world a better place. Unless you're looking at other people, which is wrong. Right, exactly. That, that's, that, even not, that, that, that for sure. So, but because it is ecstasy for its own sake, it is ultimately egocentric and evil. And therefore, Nadav and Abihu were punished just as Adam was punished. Their punishment, like a, all divine punishments, was not a mere chast chastisement of vengeance, but the direct result of an outcome of the misdeed. They saw to the ecstasy of the soul and shunned the experience of life in the body. So their souls left their body to rejoin their divine origin, leaving their bodies lifeless corpse. You, or you, want, you want to just be like with God, then, then you have nothing to do in this world. You want to stay in this world, then you have to live for this world. You have to make the world a better place. But they, they just wanted to get high and stay high. Okay, then you have nothing to do here. So... They also sinned by offering sacrifices while drunk. Immediately after the death, God commanded Aaron not to enter the sanctuary precincts while drunk. This, our sage's state, alludes to the fact that his two sons died because they were performing the sanctuary service while drunk. Remember that 
Pesach we get drunk, Purim we get drunk, there was wine on the altar, we use wine, the rabbis used to drink a bit wine before they learn. The whole idea is, by Lubavitch, they do Fabrengen, the whole idea is it opens the mind. You're not supposed to get drunk, drunk, but drunk like open mind, it opens the mind. Drunk like on Purim, and a healthy drink. On, on, on Pesach, you have to drink wine. It has to affect you, because it opens your mind. Obviously, if you, you know, you're alcoholic, don't do it. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, don't, don't, you know, if you, you only do if you can handle it. If you fall asleep after the first cup, it's not worth it. Uh, but take a lighter wine. Adam sinned this way also, for as our sages say, Eve squeezed grapes and gave him the juice to drink together with the dregs. With its dregs. Dregs is the, I guess, the, the seeds and the skin, I guess. The juice and its dregs were the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The primary of sin, partaking of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, is seen in the eyes of our sages, not as one specific act, but a conglomerate of several. Of several. The common denominator of these is the aggrandizement of the ego, the transformation of men from a pure channel of divinity into the world, into a self-oriented agent with his own egocentric agenda. There are four opinions as to what the tree of knowledge of good and evil was. Interestingly, there is no opinion that it was an apple, although the Garden of Eden is spoken as being an apple or orchard. According to one opinion, it is a vine, and Eve squeezed wine out of the grapes to give to Adam. So the dregs of the wine are the elements of ego within the experience of ecstasy, which poison the experience and make it self-serving. The tree of knowledge of good and evil is the mic admixture of pure experience with that of ego. In everything he does, man may choose either to seek his own self-gratification or selfless dedication to elevating the world. By choosing self-gratification, man increases the opacness of the world to godliness. By choosing pure experience, he renders reality more transparent, revealing more on, of its innate divinity. If we didn't have pleasure when we had sex, the only the other will have vision, then we'll do it only of, out of pure love for the for the other to have love. But we have pleasure. Why we have pleasure? Because we need to be to give pleasure with excitement, with desire. It gives more pleasure to the other. But the, the thing is that we don't have. It's it's tricky because then you might be focused on your own pleasure and forget about giving love to the other. That's that's the cha that's the challenge. It's a mixture. It's a dust mixture. He chose not to drink the good wine, uh, wine uh, which has no dregs, and gladdens God and man. This one is spoken as of as gladdening God, for the name here used for Elohim signifies severe judgment, and drinking good wine transforms it into gladness. The other impure wine is called a cup of wine fully mixed, the wicked fully mixed, meaning the wicked ones of the world will drink and suck its dregs. Choosing to relate to reality not through the clouded lens of ego renders the world more fit to receive divine blessing. It does figuratively transform God's attribute of judgment and limitation to that of benevolence and happiness. Adam sinned additionally in wanting to draw all the nations under the wings of the divine presence. This caused all the suffering that befell him and has befallen us throughout our exile. Moses also erred this way and therefore had to die in the desert. King Solomon also erred by encouraging conversion. We're almost there. As we have explained previously, the psychology and innate orientation of the non-Jew is that of sustaining, perfecting the functioning of the world. Sustaining. This is their role in the big picture of mankind, the world into a home for God. They're, we are here to fix, but they're here to help us fixing, to sustain that fixing, to keep it, keep it straight. The problem is that they